Hi, everyone. Cheryl Cran here. Welcome to season two of the Next Now podcast. If you have been listening to season one, you know that I've been talking about a people first future where we're focused on technology automating the mundane and us as human beings elevating the humane. And so in season two, I'm going to talk more about that, but more about the technology piece, the influence, as well as the impact of change, the pace of change and what that's going to mean for us in this convergence of AI, technology innovation, speed of change for organizations, and and what it's going to mean for us as a society as well. So that's sort of season two overview. In this particular episode, I do want to talk about chat GPT AI and AI that's just like it, where you're able to go in and interact with AI as if it's a buddy, as if it's a pal, as if it's a source that you're just asking a question, sort of like Siri, if you will, or you know Google or these other Alexa, these other technologies that have been AI enabled for a while. So it's not brand new. When ChatGPT came out in November, it was more like this uproar of, oh my gosh, now we're going to have access to all these things. We're going to have this uh, virtual assistant, literally virtual assistant, that's going to help us do things. So like anything, um, even when the internet was first created and then Google, it was fear of you know mis- misuse or abuse of power. And one of those big fears with AI is that it's biased, that it'll spread fake news, that it will um, uh, create inequities, that it will um, create, you know, homework people, students in university and college and school will use it and there'll be more plagiarism. Um, There's all sorts of concerns about it. But like any new technology, those concerns are well in in the uh, headspace of the regulators. I know for a fact that uh, when it comes to bias and when it comes to fake news, that is being um, looked at now and you know, in, in in some ways, going through the Facebook debacle that we did a few years ago with fake news, a lot of those measures to prevent it now are known and are going to be put into play. In the meanwhile, though, I have been using ChatGPT since November, and I did the paid version so that I could get constant access. Uh, and I've also been using Dal E, which is the photo AI uh, app. And there's some other apps out there that I've been using. There's another one where you can ask. Uh, a celebrity to be your stylist and it's AI programmed. And then there's another one where you can ask a deceased famous person how they would look at something. It's very fascinating. And I'm sure on Instagram, you've seen those AI created video montages of fashion over decades and those kinds of things. So there's many things that AI can do at the speed of a blink of an eye, which is really exciting. And for me, I actually wrote an article where I used ChatGPT and I put in the parameters. I said, I'd like to write an article about leadership. I'm going to make eight points about leadership, which are communication. So I gave it all the content and then it spit out the article for me, a thousand words. And of course, I couldn't just publish it as that. I had to go through and reshape it and edit it. But then the next time I asked it, I said, write an article in the style of Cheryl Cran. And it did. And I've asked, actually a friend of mine went in and said, write me an article in the style of Cheryl Cran. <laughs> now, that can be frightening because you're going, wait a minute, what about plagiarism and such? But at the end of the day, the measures of being able to know that it's it's been uh, AI generated, those are in play. Like I know colleges and universities have ways of knowing if it's an AI generated entire paper, for example, or article. So the concerns about it, yes, they're valid. Um, I particularly, when it comes to people first, you know, the bias or the uh, discrimination factors are concerning for me, but I do know that they're being um, considered and it will be improvements as we move forward. I think in the meantime, any technology, it is as good as the people using it. So if we are well-intentioned, if we are intending to be creating good things, then I think it's it can be a force for good. We can we can actually create at the speed of change. Uh, I know some industries were concerned about it, such as branding and marketing, like thinking that their jobs would be replaced. Uh, there's a number of research papers out of Harvard, and there's been some uh, other you know major universities where they're saying that jobs will not be replaced. Think of AI as your own personal assistant. And what it's going to do is help you produce more, more quickly. And it's going to help you be able to to actually do more because you've got this AI-enabled assistant. So now that I've sort of, you know, given the the background of, of what I think about the AI, here's how I think we can use it to be better leaders. 
Did you know right now that you can go into chat GPT and you can ask it, what are the top three tips for me to have a difficult conversation with one of my employees? Well, it'll give you those tips. Now, of course, you know, you don't want to take everything at face value. You want to still use your reason, your common sense, and you would might maybe still want to Google it to compare answers. But I know when I asked it that, it gave really good answers. Now, for me, being a leadership expert, future of work expert, I would have chosen maybe different answers and I would have ex- really uh, gone further with some of the answers it gave. But at at first blush, if I was a brand new leader asking ChatGPT, it didn't mislead me or misguide me. It gave some sound sound tips on, on how to deal with difficult um, conversations. So, you know, here's what I think as leaders, it, it helps us to use another source of getting information. So I, I, I've used it for book synopsis. So go in and give me the overall synopsis of Brene Brown's book, Atlas of the Heart, for example. Now, I have the book, I've read it, but it gave the synopsis and I went, oh yeah, cool. That's a very good overview. So it can save us time for learning and for gathering information. Uh, You know, books are a great example. I've actually used it for YouTube. I put a link in and said, give me, um, you know, like I had a one hour video that I don't have time to watch a video for an hour. So I put the link in and said, give me the overall synopsis of this video. And it did. So there's a lot of things we can use that it can help our productivity, speed things up. Um, I'm going to be writing an article in addition to this podcast around ways to use it to speed up. But those are just some examples. Research, um, uh, asking it questions on how to do things. Uh, You can actually use it. Let's say you're going to have a coaching conversation with an employee. You can put in there in chat, GPT, um, give me three uh, ideas on how this person could improve their performance based on this, 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 and this. Now, here's the thing about AI and chat GPT. It's only as good as the prompts that you put in there. And that's why researchers are saying it's not going to replace any human job anytime soon, because you need to have the context and the understanding of the question you're asking in order to generate the best answer. So I believe, and even now I've been seeing this, that there's jobs being created. So as much as we fear jobs being lost, there's jobs being created. There's jobs right now called chat GPT AI prompter. So there's actually jobs for this where the person is really good at getting the right prompts to get the right data out of the AI system. So uh, again, as a leader, I encourage you to not be afraid of it. If you've already played around with it, you know its potential, you know what it can do. If you haven't, go check it out. Check out the free version. I've also used DAL-E for photos. And in fact, um, in my keynote presentations, I gave a prompt to DAL-E. Now, by the way, DAL-E doesn't know how to do human faces. Uh, If you ask it to do people, it does this distorted, almost horror movie-like version of faces. It's actually quite creepy. So um, you have to prompt it to say, uh, you know, uh, a rear view of humans because it will do the back of the head and all that. But if it's trying to do faces, it doesn't have the natural language processing yet to do faces at a high level. But if you're doing photos, like I did a photo of uh, for my a recent keynote speech where I said, uh, create a photo of a team of business people walking over a bridge into a modern futuristic b- uh, building. And it did. It's an excellent photo and I use it. So it's it's a custom generated photo that I'm using for my purposes. And, you know, a lot of people might go, well, we're putting photographers out of business or what about I stock photo or, or all those things. This is not to replace all those things. I still pot, buy my photos, I stock photo. And, and so therefore the photographers are getting credited. Uh, but it's really more about using it as a backup source. If I want a really custom photo that I can't find anywhere else, DAL-E has been a really great resource for me for doing that. So, um, you know, I don't know how you feel about AI. We are definitely at a new juncture of, of, you know, access to information. Uh, In the next year, more people on the planet will have access to Internet. Uh, Remember, there's a whole segment of the planet who, uh, due to access or or being an underprivileged country, does not have access to Internet. But that access is is, uh, predicted to include and to increase to about 50%, over 50% of the population now, which means not only are we going to have more people interacting with all the tech tools that we currently have, but more and more people accessing AI. And so, uh, you know, again, everybody's made a big deal about this, but AI has been in, in our, it's been our purview for a number of years now. For example, you know that if you're looking for shoes on Google, the next thing you know, it, shoes are showing up on your Instagram feed. So this is all AI. So again, it's more about as a leader, how can you leverage AI? And as I gave you a few examples, research, uh, asking it questions, 
writing for you to give you synopsises of books uh, to speed up your con- your when you're consuming information. That's how I'm using it right now, and it is saving me time and it's also giving me valuable insight. So that's it for this episode. I do plan to invite a AI expert on for a future episode to give us even more. So if you like what you've heard here and you have questions, please put them below the video or or you can interact with me on LinkedIn. I'll be posting this there as well. Uh, but yeah, let's, let's look at AI as force for good. Let's look at how we can leverage it as leaders to be better human beings. AI is not able to emote. It's not able to be a human leader. As leaders, we have the opportunity to focus more on our empathy, compassion, our communication, uh, being a better human being. Uh, leveraging our technology to do those auto, those mundane things so that we can spend more time one-on-one with people, driving change forward through conversations and dialogue. So I hope you enjoyed this quick episode. I look forward to seeing you on the next episode for this season and all the best. Mm-hmm.